One row stripes are great for creating incredible color combinations, for uh, using up odds and ends we have in our stash, and for seamlessly blending different dye lots all in one project. But when we work one row stripes in the round, there are always those problems of jogs and those messy strands that we have to carry up, and that's why we can't use more colors. In this video, I'll show you how to avoid all of this with Helix Knitting. Let's see how the magic happens. I'll make a swatch with three colors. This would be color A, color B, and color C. Uh, the cast on is done in segments. First decide how many colors you're going to use. I know I'm going to use three. Then decide how many stitches you're going to cast on. I'm going to cast on 30. And then divide the number of stitches by the number of the colors. So in my case, the math would be 30 stitches divided by three colors. That means 10 stitches. So this is the amount of your, the, the size of your segment, 10 stitches in this case. And we'll start casting on with color A. So I'll move the other two colors aside for now. And the best to cast on to use, uh, because we're gonna uh, cast on with different colors and not every cast on is good for that. So the best cast on to use would be the knit on or the, um, the cable cast on. So make a, make a slip knot and then um, I will be using a knit on. So I'm gonna just insert the needle, wrap it, pull through and put the stitch back. In terms of the tools, you can use anything that you normally use for working in the round. So it could be double pointed needles, it could be the circular needles, two or one, with or without the magic loop. I'm going to use, as you see, the circular needle and I'm going to use the, the magic loop technique because I'm going to cast on just 30 stitches. So uh, with the knit on, cast on, or cable, cable cast on works well for that as well, cast on 10 stitches in color A. Okay, here we go. 10 stitches cast on with uh, color A. Now take color B, attach it with a simple knot to color A, move the knot up, and continue casting on, but this time we're going to use color B for, uh, to make 10 more stitches. Okay, here we go. 10 stitches with color B. Now we attach the last color, color C. In my case, it's going to be olive green. And the same way, just tie the knot. And then cast on, you guessed it probably, 10 more stitches using color C. And here we go. Cast on is done. 10 stitches in color A, 10 stitches in color B, and 10 stitches in color C. Because I'm going to use the magic loop, then I'm going to slide the stitches and rearrange the needles. If you use the uh, double pointed needles, then you do uh, the same thing, basically rearranging stitches and stuff with the double pointed. And then we're going to start actually knitting. Okay, I want to pay attention at a few things. First of all, when you turn the, the yarn, you always keep it at the top. That's true not just for the magic loop, but for the double point, uh, if you use double pointed needles as well. Another thing, uh, because there are so many different strands and it looks quite messy, especially in the first round, then uh, I suggest we put all tails down. At least tails won't be in our way. So I have three tails here and I simply just move them Okay, this one is, okay, this is the, okay, now here we go. So put all tails down so they're not in your way, okay? And uh, we just start knitting, that's it. We'll be working in stocking that stitch. You can join for stitches for working in the round or not, it's up to you, but make sure that the stitches are not twisted. That's just general guideline for working in the round. And we continue working with the color C, the one that is the closest to the beginning of the round. So we simply work with that color and knit 10 stitches in the color A. Basically, we knit each segment of the stitches with a certain color until we come to a group of stitches in a different color. 
So when we see that the stitches are um, change the color, like we do right here, see we worked the rusty color and now we came to the uh, golden color and that means we stop and change the color. How do we do that? That's the most important thing. Uh, very important not to twist the stitches. So you take the old yarn, the color that you've been working with, in our case it's color C, and you put it to the right. Then at this same point you see that there is color A hanging, it's attached to the work. So you pick that one up and I still have the tail wrapped around it, so I'm gonna fix that. This is some mischievous tail, it just likes ruining my work. So pick the yarn, the color A, and continue working. Continue working until you come again to the spot where the color of the stitches changes. And this is happening right here. See the golden uh, stitches are knit and now we come to a segment that is made, uh, that was cast on with color C, the olive. And at that very place we see, so we put this one to the right, uh, we don't twist the yarn, and at this very place we see that the golden color is right here waiting for us to pick it. So that's what we do, pick the golden color and knit all the stitches that are cast on in the uh, olive color. And then we come to the, uh, to the end of the round and uh, I'll show you what happens in just a moment, just two more stitches. Okay, we come to the end of the round. How do we know that? There is this tail. It shows us where the end of the round is, but the tail is here, but there is no yarn to pick up. See, there is no yarn hanging here. That means that we continue to work with this color, with the golden color, for another segment of another next 10 stitches until we come to a um, uh, place where the color of the stitches changes. And this is how helix knitting works. Super easy. You work once you have the setup, once you have your work in place, you simply knit all stitches of the same color with the color that is already waiting for you there to pick up. So we continue working in the golden color. I'll take more some more yarn. Until we come to the stitches that are knit in rusty color, in our color A. And here's another very important thing. Aside from not twisting yarns ever, there is one more very important thing. When you pick up the yarn, it's going to be the olive, don't pull it. Don't pull it like that. Don't do that. Because the whole idea of helix knitting is to create stripes that are continuous. They go on a spiral. They kind of continue on and on and on and all like barber pole and that's another name for this type of knitting and that means that this stitch the last stitch of the previous segment worked in this color is part of that stripe if we pull it tight which is a big temptation i tell you i feel that as well that you know urge to pull to make it all neat but don't do that okay all stitches should be of the same size so when you change the color then make sure that this stitch is about the same size as the rest of the stitches. So don't pull it tight. Otherwise, your stripes would be, um, you know, you will see it. It's like a part of a stripe is smaller than the rest of the stripe and it shows. And the whole idea of knitting this way is to make sure nothing shows, right? So that's what I suggest we do. Don't pull the yarn and don't uh, twist the yarns because that creates a jog and it also shows. And uh, then continue working on and on and on. You don't even have to count stitches. You don't have to look for 
uh, you know, markers or anything. You just look for colors. That's it. That's the main guideline. See, this color ended and then at the same place, very conveniently, <laughs> there is the yarn hanging. Make sure the stitches are all the same size and you're not pulling this, the last one of the previous segment and continue knitting. And you don't just knit. You can work in any pattern you like. I'm going to show you a swatch that I made with the ribbing. So it's same idea. See, same colors. That's how I started. I cast it on one third in one color, one third in the other color, and one third in color C. And then instead of knitting all stitches, I started working in ribbing. And you can do that too. It's it's very uh, good technique. And the best thing is is that when you look at the wrong side, you don't see any strands. How magical is that? You work in so many different colors and you don't have even one strand. And that means that your fabric is flexible, it's, it stretches, and you don't have those kind of, you know, jammed places where the strands are too small. You don't have that mess. And, uh, and that, that's great. You can start working from the cast on, just like we did right now, or you can introduce a section of the stripes in your project. Think like hats or mitts or socks. Uh, here's a swatch just to show you how to, you know, how it works. See, let's assume this is a hat. And then you can work ribbing in a solid color and then add stripes and continue working in stripes. And when you add stripes, you can tell it right here. You do it same way as we did when we cast on. We introduced colors one by one, but uh, when in that round, when you decide, okay, that's where I add colors, then what you do in this case, you will knit 10 stitches uh, in color A, then you add color B, knit 10 stitches in color B, and then you add color C and knit 10 stitches in color C. And that's how you get that helix going. And then the rules are the same. You simply work till the other color comes up and then you pick up the other yarn and continues working on and on and on. When it's time to bind off stitches, then uh, first you need to decide which color you're gonna use. In this swatch and this one, I used the rusty color. And then when you come to that color, when you are about to start working with that color, then you find off stitches. That's all. <laughs> no, com no complications at all. So you just decide which color you're going to use. And, but instead of working in that color, you bind off stitches in that color. And that's how the helix magic works. Isn't it incredible how just one technique can provide so many different options? Stay creative, my friends. I'll see you next Thursday.